Hello, family. Howdy, kinfolk. Greetings, beloved community. Vicksburg, Infinity, and beyond. It is Tuesday, June 9th, I think. Um, honored to be with you in this space. My name is Andy. I get to serve as rector of Church of, of the Holy Trinity. This is our love stream. Have a special guest, Lee Davis Thames. We're going to talk in a bit. I just want to go over a few things especially with the beloved of Holy Trinity. Um, we worshiped uh, for the first time this past week face to face. On Tuesday, 48 gathered in the nave of Holy Trinity uh, to do the burial rite for Will Conway. It was really powerful in that space to be there and surround that family. We left from there, went to Green Lawn Garden Cemetery, where half of Vicksburg was there, worshiped in that space. On Sunday, uh, I think 14 gathered at eight o'clock. It was really a nice gathering. I know I lost it. Um, um, it, was, uh, it was great to be in that space with those folks doing what we do, enjoying the ritual that has lasted uh, th throughout the ages. And then at 1015, I think the number was 38, 45. We sanitized in between. We received the Eucharist of one kind. We had a trumpet player, that, which was great. Dorothy Wallace and her amazing voice and Dorothy Brassfield, just really strong, amazing on the organ. Um, we understand uh, those people that came I hope it fed them and blessed them as we've journeyed through these 14 weeks. For those who stayed at home, so honored and appreciated your willingness to stay safe. We're going to keep on moving slow. We're going to um, keep on being extra cautious. Our custom is to wear a mask. Um, um, and we're also shooting to be the cleanest church in town, but also the most sacred. So. Uh, as you feel drawn, come up here, even if it's during the week, uh, the, the nave is sanitized, uh, the staff is back um, uh, almost full time, so uh, come and give your offering and give, give your thanks. Um, it's powerful to know that in Mississippi, the new cases reported just yesterday were 498. I know that has spiked up from hanging in the mid-200s. Um, I know in Warren, Warren County, according to the CDC of Mississippi, 214 cases, 12 deaths. I know in the United States, 1.938 million are, have been sickened with the coronavirus. 110,000 plus have died worldwide, 6.93 million, 401,000 people. This is serious. On top of that, peaceful protests in every state, every city. Um, also demonstrations that got out of hand, but for the most part, powerful, peaceful process. So I'm so glad to have Lee Davis Thames here, um, who I've known about for the longest time. Um, born in 1936. Um, been through it, has seen it all. Um, he's been a larger than life figure to me because being in the Episcopal Church, he was so well known. He, he also uh, is, is, is well spoken. So you just know Lee Davis's presence and now get to be his priest, um, which a lot of us know is the final chapter of his journey. Um, it's great. So to have a faith conversation with you, Lee Davis, you've inspired me. Um, you've been married to, to Jane for 48 years. I've really been blessed to witness you um, care for your partner and uh, the vows uh, stretch, I know, from 48 years ago. Y'all have seven children together, is that right? Yes. How many grandchildren? 16. <laughs> Great grandchildren? One. <laughs> hey, say, say that prayer uh, you've, you've repeated to me a few times when we gathered, if you will. And I want to just start asking you questions about your journey and faith. Almighty God, 
in obedience to your will, I offer to you my life this day. All that I have and all that I am to be holy and unconditionally yours. Take me and use me as you will, where you will, when you will, and with whom you will, until I am holy and unconditionally yours. Amen. 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 Well, well tell me, you're born and raised in Vicksburg. Yeah, and look, I, one quick thing. Uh, yeah. My sweetheart and I have been together longer than 48 years, but who's counting? 48 plus. 48 plus. Uh, I think it's more like 51 plus. Great, great, great. All right, well, well, well tell us, what was Church of the Holy Trinity like? You coming here as a kid, um, um, give us that story. What did it feel like? What did it smell like? What did it look like to you? Your image of God back then. Um, the, the church uh, looked just like it does now. Uh, you know, and, and except it looked much larger to me when I was very young. I was baptized in that font up there uh, 83 years ago. So I've been, I, I don't remember it then, but uh, my earliest recollections are it looked pretty much like it does now. Uh, the, uh, the congregation, uh, it, growing up and looking at it as a child, um, it was a reserved congregation. We, it was a quiet place. Uh, the, it, to the extent that there was energy, it was mostly, I guess, inside the grown-ups. Uh, quiet, dignified, holy, uh, and, uh, and, and, and sustaining, but uh, not the kind of energy that we have now. And of course, the prayer book didn't have the passing of the peace or anything. So, but that's the way it was, and it, and it was good. It was good, and you know, I grew up, uh, Jane and I say, we, we grew up in the best of times. I, I guess I would modify that to say that if we, since we were white, we grew up in the best of times, but we are, and so we did. Uh, uh, Holy Trinity, as I grew up into my, my uh, high school times, you know, we had a, had a good, in those days, it was YPSL, Young People's Service League. Right. And we, uh, some of my friends uh, and their, or their siblings or members of the congregation even today, and, and, and that's fun. Uh, who, who was the priest back then, Lee Davis? Who, who was uh, the rector? Bob Allen uh, uh, was the, well, when I was, when I was first around uh, and, and too young to know, it was uh, Camille Esternell, but that's a story for another day. Yes. Uh, but uh, Bob Allen was the, uh, it was a rector at that time, tall, slender man, and his wife, uh, Helen, was a tiny little thing. It's sort of like Mutt and Jeff, uh, and yeah. she was a force to be reckoned with. Uh, and 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 they and so with the young people, uh, we had a good group and uh, good times. Uh, and uh, I remember the junior choir, although I can't, you know, carry a tune in a bucket. But the junior choir was active, uh, and during Lent, we had even song a uh, couple of nights a week, and we came from church, I mean, from school, and sang. Uh, and uh, so it was, a, it was a good program from that standpoint. Uh, some division of youth, Gray Center. It, it wasn't Gray Center, it was Baton Green. Wow. So hey, uh, your, your image of God, did you have any experiences of God early on? Um, did you, did you ever question what uh, religion? Did you go through a, a dark night, teenage years? Uh, God uh, was always hanging around. Uh, <laughs> he was an adult. Uh, uh, the guy that I spent more time with was Jesus. And... Uh, and, and that was through the scriptures, uh, the, the, the New Testament. And um, so it was a learning time, you, and, and it, it was, uh, you know, it, it was exciting sometimes, certainly uh, serving uh, as an acolyte on Easter, one of the great services and one of my great uh, mountaintop experiences every Easter, you know. 
Yeah, man. But uh, my recollection really is is Jesus, uh, my buddy. Uh, so that's sort of the way it was until uh, we got older. Um, when we went, uh, my aunt Gloria Bottom uh, uh, took. Uh, Jack Burchett, that's Dorothy's uh, older brother, and uh, Sue Ferguson, Dick's older sister, um, and we went to Canoogle for the first time. Anybody from the Diocese of Mississippi went to the big camp up in uh, North Carolina, Wonderful. and that was a that was a big time for us. Uh, how, how, and, how old were you? How old were you? Uh, that was, I guess, we were juniors in high school at the time. But from that, we came back and, in effect, started what is now the uh, uh, EYC movement in, in the diocese. Wow. And uh, the next year, Aunt Glow and, and uh, I'm having a senior moment. I'll remember the lady with her. But uh, we took a bus, took 40-some-odd people to Canoogle and, uh, and got, that, got that organized. Uh, so it was an exciting time. That I remember place on my mind too. That place, yeah. I've had mystical experiences there. Good. We uh, uh, also Holy Trinity hosted uh, some some uh, council meetings of the diocese, and in those days they were simpler, and they everybody met in in the they just came and sat in the pews at Holy Trinity because we were I guess the biggest nave in the diocese. And yes. then uh, we had uh, the committees met out in the in the uh, parish hall, which at that time was a basketball court. And where wow. your office is, and and all around the basketball court were little rooms, uh, Sunday school rooms, and all. And so the committee members meet there. So that was an exciting time. Uh, one I remember particularly, uh, my uh, grandmother Nell Thames had invited to come down. Uh, Mrs. Raspberry from Oklahoma. Uh, she was uh, 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 an, one of the African-American ladies, a leader in, in the uh, ECW, but uh, they didn't, uh, th unfortunately, it wasn't until I think Grandmother Nell invited her to come and some others, they hadn't joined uh, the, 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 the annual council or whatever but I, I remember it because i remember my great my grandmother uh, who was then was going blind uh, but still sharp as a tack and she and miss raspberry uh hanging around together and talking uh and uh miss raspberry's son who is about my age uh, right. ended up being a great columnist and pulitzer prize winner for the washington post and I, I also remember Andy, uh, a very prominent member of Holy Trinity lady, a uh, Caucasian came up to my grandmother knowing she was losing her sight. And when Ms. Raspberry moved on to meet with someone else, she said, Mrs. Thames, do you know that Mrs. Raspberry is colored? And Grandma Nell said, well, well, yes, but what does that matter? Wow. And uh, that was uh, one of many define such defining mo uh, moments in my life, early life at Holy Trinity and with that sweet grandmother of mine. Powerful, powerful. You graduated from Ole Miss 1958? Yeah, I did. And you're editor of the year yearbook twice? Yeah, I was editor of the yearbook twice, actually. Uh, the second time I was in law school and uh, they I, I was supposed to be editor of the uh, law journal, but I found out that they didn't pay you or do anything. It was just for honor and to help you get a good job after you got out. So, uh, but if I was editor of the annual, I got, I got a submit, I got tuition and uh, a little money toward uh, uh, my dormitory. So I, I ended up uh, being the editor the second time, the, the 1960 yearbook, which is my senior year in law school. Nice. You, uh, you went to St. Peter's every Sunday during college? No, not every Sunday because uh, I, I was, uh, uh, Camille Jofion was the rector there when I first went up there. Uh, and then uh, Duncan too came, but uh, I was uh, a, a lay reader. Uh, 
and uh, I guess, and I was licensed in 1954. I suspect I may be one of the oldest licensed lay readers in the diocese by this time, living anyway. But uh, so on uh, two Sundays a month, uh, I would borrow a car uh, or hitchhike down to Water Valley and conducted the morning prayer service okay. at the church in Water Valley. And uh, Mr. Hendrick, who I remember was the uh, bank president down there and was the uh, sort of the big man in the, in the little church, uh, Episcopal church. And he took me home for Sunday dinner uh, every Sunday. That was one of, one of the inducements for, uh, uh, for looking forward to it. So I, I did, uh, I was a lay reader then for much of the time. And so I did that as well as at, at St. Peter's. Fantastic. And, and then you went to law school right after that, right? Right after you graduated? Yeah, I, I, I graduated in, in 58 uh, and uh, commissioned in the Army Infantry, uh, but things were quieter in those days, so I had an 11-month delay and call to active duty. So I had, and I'd worked my way through school, and uh, I had planned to work during those 11 months, but I majored in Greek and the demand for Greek majors in the Delta was not overwhelming and I couldn't get a job. Yep. So I just walked across the Grove the day after I got uh, my degree and uh, signed up for law school because uh, the uh, Eng I was, they didn't have the courses I needed to finish my uh, master's in English. So I started law school and liked it and stayed in and then went on active duty after that. What was church like in active duty? What was your relationship to God then? How, how did it start to evolve, change? Do you remember that? Yeah, I, I do remember some. Uh, I, 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 I would say that it was different, but then everything in my life in the infantry was different <laughs> from, uh, from my life. Uh, but, uh, and I remember interacting with chaplains, um, and, and not all Episcopalian, as a matter of fact. Right. Uh, and which was an interesting thing. Uh, it uh, it sort of helped me realize how how much the Episcopal Church and its Book of Common Prayer meant to me. Yes. But it was a good experience, and uh, uh, you know, it, at some point, they they thought this little uh, lieutenant uh, wet behind the ears. Uh, could counsel his uh, forty-five-year-old sergeants uh, uh, that were in his platoon, and uh, and uh, so I, I leaned heavily on the on the uh, chaplains to help uh, in that. Tell, tell me, uh, uh, you you've also been involved not only uh, here in, in Vicksburg at Holy Trinity, but in the National Church. You've been on so many co committees. T tell me. Uh, what that experience was like the Episcopal Church nationally and globally? Um. Well, uh, it, it was it was for me breathtaking, uh, and again reaffirmed uh, the specialness of the Episcopal Church. Really, um, and uh, I I sort of started out uh, at some point uh, being active at, at annual council and and. A lot of folks in the congregation have done that for the, for the diocese. And then uh, I, uh, as, as if when, when Bishop uh, uh, Allen became the presiding bishop, I was, he, he appointed me to, a, to the Standing Committee on Peace. Wow. I was by that time, a, uh, I guess, a full colonel in the army. And uh, I, I think he thought he would send in a ringer on that peace commission. And that was a very interesting experience because uh, uh, the, the people in the Episcopal Peace Fellowship who, who became my, some of my dearest friends uh, didn't expect to find uh, an officer in the United States Army, uh, infantry, whatever, uh, <laughs> right. care about peace or whatever. And so it was, a, it was, it was really, good for me, but uh, we worked hard on, in those days, uh, dealing with the threat of nuclear war. Uh, I had, uh, had, had been sent to, uh, as, as a, in, in the military, I had sent, was the first reserve component officer sent to uh, 
the NATO senior staff officer course at Oberammergau, Germany, where we dealt with nuclear weapons deployment and whatever, very sobering. Uh, and uh, then we also on the Peace Commission uh, dealt down in Nicaragua. Uh, I had to get permission from the army to go. We started a, uh, a hospital down there. We thought that that one of the pathways to peace there would be to, to start a, a hospital uh, for women, uh, a birthing hospital primarily. Uh, and and uh, some smart person uh, found a place where it was pretty close between the uh, the lines of the uh, Contras and, and the uh, Sandinistas. Wow. And so it, it worked out pretty well because the women uh, who were pregnant and, and wanted the best care they could get and for their infants uh, really didn't care whether you were a Sandinista or Contra, and they would come in to have their babies and receive treatment and all. And uh, it really made a contribution uh, in that area. So that was a good experience. Uh, I spent uh, six years on the committee on uh, commission on uh, small congregation ministry and uh, spent that whole time traveling around the U.S. working with small congregations uh, around West Virginia, Montana, even uh, though in, in California or wherever, learned a lot about that. Yes. And uh, well, that's some of it. Anyway, it was, and then uh, I just recently retired or resigned uh, because of my, my, my health situation. Uh, but I've served a couple of years on the board of trustees of the, uh, uh, the College for Bishops, uh, which was, uh, has been a, a remarkable experience for me as a layperson to spend time with uh, these leading leaders uh, uh, and working, I've worked with uh, the now presiding bishop, but uh, worked with him when he was bishop of North Carolina and some remarkable Totally. So uh, I, I've been blessed with it, and it certainly has has, has helped my own uh, growth. Let me let me ask you: What has Jesus said to you throughout all those big experiences of life? Uh, first of all, then I'm going to come back with another question: What is Jesus saying to you now? So, in the midst of all that amazing, complicated, hurried life seeing the, the globe and the Episcopal Church at work. What was Jesus saying to you then? Andy, uh, I, I tell I, I joke with my friends that I've been giving God orders for 83 years and he never has listened to me. Uh, and, and it's taken a long time to learn that, that he moves in his own time in his own way. So I'm not sure, uh, what all Jesus said that I hadn't hear, didn't hear. Mm -hmm, right. But, but my, I guess my experience over the, the region, and, and let me just interrupt, I, I remember because another one of the really formative times for me, uh, I spent on the Peace Commission uh, in, uh, in uh, Jerusalem uh, and in Israel and, and uh, with the Palestinian Christians and the Jubali, Jubalia refugee uh, during the Jubali uh, refugee uh, uh, re revolution. Anyway, uh, and through all of that, I, I've, I've always been aware of the love that is at the heart of who we are and what this church is about. Uh, initially and for a long time, more intellectually than any other way, frankly. Right. Uh, but even then, in some of this, I could see it. Uh, looking back, I probably didn't. No, not probably. I just didn't didn't feel it or understand it or or you know. And so, yeah. for me in my journey, I think the growth of the awareness of the centrality of love for everybody, not just. Episcopalians, <laughs> or you know, um, and and uh, being loved also have been pretty hard for me. I, I've I've begun to learn that even better since my cancer diagnosis. Frankly, I've, it's been but, so powerful uh, to journey with you when you found out 
about this diagnosis and then to see so many people from this amazing congregation take you um, to Jackson for treatments. I, it was, I've seen uh, a lot of holy living. I've also been around people uh, where death was holy. I think gathering with friends and telling stories and the way you've been honest and transparent about it, um, you know, uh, it's, it's been an inspiration for, for me, a trust, a faith. What is, what is Jesus saying to you now? What kind, or is it a comfort? Um, um, oh, yeah. Uh, tell I, me what, I just, I, uh, I, I don't think that uh, Jesus is saying anything to me now that he hadn't been saying for 83 years. It's just that I hear it better. Uh, and um, certainly uh, the, the, the diagnosis and uh, the uncertainty, but, but relatively short fuse I've been led to believe is out there has helped me uh, hear better and, uh, and be a lot more comfortable uh, uh, about where I am and, and the beautiful place where I'm headed. Uh, it's just, it, it has been sort of the culmination of that, of that stream of, of, of awareness and growth that started, you know, back at Holy Trinity when I was, when Jack Burchett and I were acolytes or used to have a, a bet when we were crucifers as to who could carry the cross and get the, the processional cross closer to the cross that hangs from the from the right above when you go up the chancel steps who could get the procession cross closer to it without hitting it and uh, uh that was one of the great joys that uh, i had with jack for, for a number of years but from those days all the way up to now it's uh it's been a a, a part of progress uh, one thing about it jesus uh, certainly has a lot of patience and if he didn't have patience and a sense of humor, I, I'm afraid I would have been boated off the island a long time ago. You're a love man. You're a love. What, uh, just as we begin to wrap up, what's what's the message to your children? Um, you know, uh, and then I'm asking you, what's the message to your grandchildren? Well, I guess I start by saying it doesn't matter. They haven't listened to me anyway, so I, I no, no reason to get one. <laughs> but but, but uh, uh, just, you know, my message to everybody uh, is, uh, is seek Jesus, listen, listen carefully because he's talking and, and love, love each other as, as this, I'm blessed with, you know, I'm an only child, but with all these children and grandchildren and one great granddaughter, it's, it's a, a blessing to, to, for them to listen and love. Uh, and, uh, and particularly in these times, uh, with all that's going on and, and from, I guess I've been more since the sixties forward, I've, I've been a lot more, uh, aware of the need for that patience and that, uh, unconditional love as as much as we as human beings can can do it but the the joy is that i'm also learning how great that love really is because i know uh i got it uh yes. from, from god and all of us do not just me tell me are these times now more um chaotic and uncertain than 1968 What's your, what, what's your thought? What's your crystal ball say? Well, I, I don't uh, have any kind of uh, crystal ball. Uh, there's a difference that I feel, I'll put it that way. Uh, uh, in 1962, when, uh, I guess it was 62, uh, uh, 63, I guess, when I marched in, at DC and, and, and was privileged to hear uh, Dr. King that was certainly a, an awesome time. And ironically, I know you, we're trying to shut down, but I will tell you that, there, that at that same uh, time, at that same March, there was a lady there uh, that uh, by the name of Anita Parrott George. Yes. 
and her her father and she was raised in the bottom down in marcus bottom just a few blocks from where i li live now and uh benny her father uh was at the ymca taught me many things uh, a great man didn't know anita because the society at that time it just it just didn't happen but anita was in dc and uh she was a college student. She, like, I guess everybody around me that I know was younger than I am, but, uh, it's, uh, but anyway, uh, while work, she went to St. Mary's and, and, and so in, in the last 30 years or so, and our working together at the national level and at the diocesan level, we become dear friends, but it, but it all started at, at the Washington March. And then in 65, for Selma, when I, I will tell you that when we, when we reached the steps of the Capitol in Montgomery, I was absolutely certain that love and justice had won. Yes. No doubt in my mind. Uh, didn't take me long to uh, realize that was not the case. The lady who was to shuttle me from Montgomery back to Selma where I could get my car to come home was murdered uh, on a, just, uh, uh, just before I was gonna get in her car, the, the Klan murdered her uh, while she was on Highway 80. And of course they were tried and found not guilty uh, on the self-defense. Uh, yep. But, uh, and, I, and I will say that when I came back, uh, there weren't many people around Warren County uh, that were real proud of not, not a lot of people knew I went. I didn't make any big deal out of it. I went by myself and all, but, but, but the, the whole time uh, in the 60s with the protests and all of that, there was a different focus then than I've seen in the last 14 days. Uh, there is now, uh, I think, a, 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 a respect for people who have been under the heel or under the knee yes. of, of, uh, of, of the government and, and, and the, the power structure in this country. And, and that is present now. It gives me a little hope. Uh, I won't, I don't have as much as I would have had, had I not been so disillusioned after Selma. Right. But I have that hope. I, I, and I, and I, I think we're just moving in the right direction. And I, I pray it, it, the momentum continues. I, I, I uh, attended, um, the, the peaceful demonstration in Vicksburg on Friday. It was 300. I felt like Jesus was in the midst of us. It was like church. Um, the police chief spoke, young activists spoke, um, uh, the sheriff spoke, the mayor spoke, we sang. Um, it was really, really inspirational. Because uh, just watching everything on the news and then I see the community that I get to live in, um, uh, offer something in such a peaceful way and it seemed united and the young people are are awake to it um, yeah I, 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 as a I white person I'm trying to trying to learn I've heard it from my friends so many times how they're afraid and I can't understand it because I don't I don't have that worry being a white male but I believe them now I hear them in a different way and I'm sorry I hadn't understood it before well, it, it takes that. I, I must confess that some of my experiences in the 60s taught me that fear right, right rather early, and, right. and I do. I, and, and it broke my heart that I couldn't participate in that uh, Friday deal, but my uh, oncologist said uh, I, I couldn't for, because of the, uh, uh, the COVID-19 deal. Yes. Uh, yes. But it was important, and that's what I'm talking about. That's what, that's what we need, and and that's what the Episcopal Church has been telling us uh, 
specifically since the 60s. I know. I, I love how our faith tells us that we're all made in the image of God and we're all broken, but we're beloved and that the Holy Spirit uh, is moving us forward and that God's future with us is bright, that God loves cre creation. I get so uh, trapped when people say it's all coming to an end, um, the apocalypse. And it's just like, oh, no, that's just another birth because God will never give up on what God loves, which is, which is all of us. And, and brother, I love you. I'm honored to be your friend. I'm so, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for this time. I pray that the words uh, you shared today fly a thousand miles. Um, I pray that if someone is in a spot where they're worried, they can see how your continual process of choosing light um, and now choosing the great light, that the reward keeps on going, that life is eternal. So let me read this prayer, and I'm going to read also from, uh, from the Holy Trinity prayer list. Thank you, Lee Davis. Thank you. This is from the prayer book, page 833, Collect 63. O oh Lord, support us all the day long until the shadows lengthen, the evening comes, and the busy world is hushed, and the fever of life is over, and our work is done. Then in thy mercy, grant us a safe lodging, a holy rest, and peace at last. We pray for all those on our prayer list, for, for Jean and for Pat, and for Elizabeth, for Rochelle, for Max and Tana and Kitty, for Patricia, for Petey, for Ian, for Lynn, for Don, for Susan, for Betty, for Megan, for Cora Lee, for Glenn and Melissa and Alex and Brady and Matthew and Bob and Tenu and Andy and Susan and Emmy Lou. We pray for Philip and Debbie and Christy, Alicia, for Kathy, for Steve, for the Sante family, for Charles, for Lucas. We pray for you, Jane. Lee Davis, honored to pray for you. Pray for Daryl, for Dee Dee, for Lamar, for Lee and Billy and Ginger and Ken Hawford Sr., for Jack and Ruth, for Sarah Jane, for Tom, for JR and Sheldon, Glenn, Ashton, Greg and Evelyn. Pray for Taylor, pray for Tracy, pray for Ashley, for Darlene, for Daria, for Alan, for Will, for Matthew Weaver. In Vicksburg, there are no strangers anymore. Thank you for all the first responders. Thank you for all of you who are choosing light. Thank you for all who are being selfless, the firefighters, the sheriffs, the deputies, the police, all those who are expressing their voice in a peaceful way. Praise God for that. May the beloved community come, come, come. Holy Trinity, I am honored to uh, be your clergy leadership in this moment. Thank you for your support. Thanks for everyone who hears this, for supporting Holy Trinity in the way you do. God is with us. Uh, Lee Davis, love you, brother. Peace, peace. Friend. Love you and peace, Andy. You're an awesome person. Amen. Paperback Productions.